first of all, thank you so much for taking the time this hey. afternoon. Hey, gosh, what an introduction. It's, uh, it's hard to follow. I, I, I wish my kids were listening to that because uh, I, I keep reminding them that I am somebody and uh, you, you give me validation that way. Beautiful. A lot of my guests say, Mike, thanks for that intro. I, I don't know if it was an intro or a eulogy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so At my you. age, it could be both. <laughs> hey, hi-oh, you know? hi-oh. All right. Uh, thank, first of all, thanks so much come, for coming on, Bill. I'm a, I'm a big fan and I, like I said, thank I, you. I grew up in the era and um, you know, I would start in the early part of your you come from a great pedigree of your family. Uh, tell everybody who your mom was and your dad. Uh, my uh, my mom was Barbara Hale, uh, and my dad is Bill Williams. Uh, my dad was best remembered probably for uh, a slew of westerns that he did in the fifties, and uh, the, famously for playing Kit Carson for about five years with Don Diamond. Right, and uh, he, it was about the time that they were doing uh, Hop Along, Cassidy, and. Uh, and uh, Dale Evans and Roger, you know, that, that whole, right, it was that whole right. cowboy craze. And, uh, he went on to work with uh, Betty White and date with an angels. Oh, and wow. he, uh, he did a series called assignment underwater. And then pretty much in the mid sixties, he decided that he wanted to go into construction and he, uh, he pretty much was a developer for the rest of his life wow. and went into real estate. Oh. And uh, my mom, uh, Barbara Hale was uh, a model in Chicago for years, and then she was discovered and came out to Los Angeles and was under contract to, uh, was either RKO or Columbia. I think it was RKO. Yeah, in fact, it was RKO. She did a lot of films there. So as, she, uh, she as, was with, I'm sorry, so she, she was with the studio system back then. She was with the wow. studio system back then. Wow. And she worked with, uh, I think she gave, uh, the story goes, she gave Frank Sinatra his first on screen kiss. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, yeah. And, uh, that? yeah. And then she worked with Jimmy Stewart and James Cagney and, uh, oh, just a slew of wonderful actors until she did, uh, she was cast as Della Street in the the now famous Perry Mason uh, shows that ran from like the early mid fifties to late nineteen sixty three, and she reprised that role later on in uh, nineteen eighty five, and she did uh, twenty three uh, two hour wow. movies with wow. with Raymond Burr, uh, the Perry Mason, and I was lucky enough to work with her at that point. For four of those nine years, mm. it's funny because when I, I watch Perry Mason, it's still on. I, I, feel, I, feel, I think it's on FETV, that station nowadays. But I had no idea that was your mom, and I watch it every night. Perry Mason, I love the old, oh. you know, the old Burke's Law, and um, you know the. Uh, yeah, other, I love those type of shows because they're great stories and great storytelling and great writing as well. And uh, I did not know that, and I was like, oh my goodness, that's his mother. Wow. Yeah, it was a different type of television at that point, but yeah. uh, good. Good. I mean, I like television now. It's uh, good television, good storytelling, but the stories are different. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And f funny fact, I don't, I'm, you, I mean, I'm sure you may know this, but your dad actually did two episodes of the original Batman. I did not know that. Yeah, he played his character. It was called Multimillionaire, whatever that means. W wow. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's on his IMDb. Yeah, that's funny. Wow. I mean, you didn't. Know, I'm sure. You didn't, I'm surprised he didn't tell you that because that, you could have been really cool. But you know, when he, when he, we told you that, it would have been, it would have been very cool. <laughs> so he must have met uh, because I've I've uh, I've run into while Adam was alive. I ran into Adam West uh, at a few cons. But uh, but I I would have had something to talk to him about. Right, right. Um, you know, as a young kid growing up in that environment, you know, usually you hear stories. You know, if you grow up in a family of attorneys, you're probably going to become an attorney when you get older. Mm -hmm. uh, you actually re you were read lines with your parents. That is correct. That is correct. And my one of my earliest memories is on set with my dad uh, uh, under a horse, looking at a scene being shot. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny because later on I got to do a scene with Clint Eastwood wow. on uh, on Rawhide. My dad, I would think I was like ten years old, eleven, and I got to do a scene with him because mm -hmm. uh, my dad was cast in the show and. Um, but that was my earliest memories was there. And then, then growing up on the set of Perry Mason, I mean, uh, that was one of my great, uh, things to look forward to was getting out of school, getting up before dawn, having a cup of coffee and donuts mm. on the set of Perry Mason. That was wow. just heaven. What a thrill. What a thrill. Uh, you know, Bill, did you always want to become an actor? Cause I know you want to become a musician at first. Is that right? Yeah. I, you know, 
God, I know. I don't know what I wanted to be. You know, I still don't know what I want to be <laughs> yeah, when I grow up. Makes two of us. You know, I don't ever want but, to grow uh, up. Yeah, I've always been a musician. I studied music in school and college and whatnot. But I was also flying at the time. I thought maybe I was going to be a pilot, and that didn't last very long. Just a couple of years, and I found my way into uh, into the theater. I, I stumbled into uh, an acting class that uh, at uh, Orange Coast College where I was going, and uh, I made up ten weeks of work with the wonderful professor jack holland who rest in peace uh really uh, launched my my love of the profession you know although i had red lines with my mom and my dad growing up i never really thought about doing it oh. as a profession but then i did it and i got I, I lucked out at south coast repertory i was working with uh the, the famous uh uh david ams and martin benson mm -hmm. at the at the south coast repertory i got an agent and wow. I started working Fantastic. right away. Fantastic! Yeah, and your first your first role in in in, in television came in 1970 TV movie Night Chase, starring David Jansen and a past guest on this show, Yafet Koto. How was that in the beginning? That was gee whiz! You've done your research. Correct. Um, <laughs> Some people know how to put carburetors back together in ten. Yeah, years. that was one of my first <laughs> yeah. things. It was I remember it well because it was at the lot, uh, the CBS lot in the in the san fernando valley and it was a night shoot so i showed up at six o'clock at night wow and we shot all night it was just i played a marine sentry uh standing at a guard post and they drive up and i had a great conversation with yapit koto and david jensen it was fantastic i had a great scene with them yep now both of those actors obviously have a different dichotomy in terms of delivery was were they different you know between him and yafet koto and david jensen was it a little bit in the beginning you know as a young actor, you gotta, As, you gotta, you know. Yeah, I Koto, he was, uh, you know, he was a lot like um, Feruza Balk or Gary Busey or a lot of actors right. that they never say the same, they never do the same thing twice. Correct, you know? correct. That's what um, yeah. And that was different. And David was, David pretty much the way he was like he was when you when you see him uh, on tv you know when he was doing the fugitive he was just like that hmm. so it was pretty much the same thing every time always unique and spontaneous but the same thing whereas yeah Picotto and some other actors i've worked with you have to be on your toes and Correct. it's very impro improvisational right uh yeah yeah Picotto is actually living in the philippines i tracked him down to the philippines wonderful actor I don't, I don't know where he's gone he's actually you know? believe it or not he said he told me he's gonna he said it on the air he's gonna make a, he's been making a comeback he's making a comeback oh, good. He, he's gonna get into a lot of producing he said oh good uh, for him good uh, for him uh correct me if i'm wrong bill uh, in 1981 you do a, a you, you're big bro, you're big theater guy you do a, a play called pippin with bob fossey and, and the multi-talented ben vereen I mean, yes i did talk about yep. that uh well that in and of itself was quite a journey because mm. um I had auditioned for that seven, eight, nine times, and uh, for uh, and in fact, uh, the second year I was flown out there on their dime, beautiful, uh, beautiful, to replace uh, one of the main actors there, and uh, I didn't get it then, and I auditioned for it several other times. Finally, when they were doing the uh, the home entertainment version. Uh, where were we? I, were, I think we were here in Los Angeles at the Sophie Hotel. They were holding auditions. And I walked in, and uh, Stu Ostrow was there, and Bob Fosse was there. And I, wow. I, I, I told uh, uh, Mr. Fosse, I said, I said, Mr. Fosse, do I really have to audition for you again? And he said, <laughs> and he said no, you got the job. Because you did a fantastic job. I was watching some of your clips oh, on YouTube, thanks. and you sang, and you're beautiful with the blue shirt on. <laughs> you're dancing around the stage and stuff. I yeah. Mean, talk about working with, the multi, like I said, multi-talented Ben Vereen. Uh, lovely, lovely, lovely guy. I learned so much working from him. I mean, I had done a lot of stage before I ever did Pippin. Um, so, you know, I was, I was prepared when the opportunity came. Uh, what I was not, is a seasoned dancer and um ben was so gracious uh he came in on two sundays in a row on our days off mm. and and he taught me uh himself how to do uh right track which is the one dance number that he and uh leading player which ben played uh do and he he was really uh responsible for really helping me get my together for that 
So, Bill, after after Night Chase, you go on to appear in television shows like Emergency, MASH, Kung Fu, The, the Rookies, one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in 1976, you land your first big role as Tommy Ross in, as the unlucky prom date in Brian De Palma's 1976 horror flick, Carrie. Uh, how did you? Yeah. Get, how did that work? How did, did you audition for the role? Uh, George, George Lucas and Brian De Palma were auditioning actors uh, at the same time. Um and uh, I just went through the usual uh, uh, genesis, you know, going in to see the casting agents and then finally getting to see the directors and producers. And uh, I saw both of them and um, I got to I, I was lucky enough to get to uh, to the finals and do readings mm. for on on film for both of those projects, one with Kurt Russell for Star Wars mm. And he plays Han Solo, yeah. and I played Luke right. Skywalker. And then the other was uh, with Brian De Palma, and I did a screen test with, uh, I think it was both Sissy and somebody else. Gosh, I can't remember her name. And uh, and I had worked with, uh, of course, I knew Amy on a non-professional basis. We, we had become quite good friends uh, before we ever auditioned for Carrie. It was kind of kismet that we ended up being in the same film together. Mm some years ago on the national board of directors for the screen actors guild. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. And, uh, and I saw her sometimes two and three times a week. Uh, we got to know each other quite well, uh, exchange ideas about, uh, the, the operation and the work workflow of the screen actors guild. Mm. And, uh, and that was, that was pretty neat. We've stayed friendly, uh, ever since I, I saw her just oh, about, wow. Uh, two months ago, I saw her in uh, New Jersey. Well, well, yeah, because um, I know that Brian De Palma pretty much got her out of some semi retirement to go get her for the role. Because yes, she did. She did, and the story goes that she thought when she was doing the reading that it was a comedy. Right, right, right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> That's funny because I think he took a train out, and I think he, she was in New York or Woodstock. I think and he took a train out there. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, she wouldn't fly, huh? <laughs> yeah, you had that Leaf Leaf Garrett hairdo going on back then. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Leaf Garrett. Well, his name comes up once in a while. I don't know why, but <laughs> um, so you do you do a film with, with Tom Berenger called, called Butch Cassidy. Um, right. The, the the I'm sorry. What, what the hell was the name of it? Butch, uh, Butch Cassidy, uh, Butch and Sundance, the early days. Was yes, the early days. I'm sorry. The, the early days with yeah. Tom, Tom Berenger playing the Paul Newman role, and you do the Robert Redford. Uh, initially, uh, initially, you turned down the role. Why did you turn down the role? In the- Several times. Well, because you know Paul Newman and Robert Redford were uh, pretty much giants. Uh, yeah, giants. They were institutions in the film industry. You know, icons certainly. And, uh, you, you know, the thought was, is that we were going to try and, uh, you know, uh, capitalize on their success. Right. And I, I didn't want that. I was already having troubles. People saying, oh, I'm the next Robert Redford. And I'm going, no, not even, you know, right. He was, he was always kind of a leading man. And I always saw myself as this funny kind of a quirky guy, you know, and, uh, we, I, I didn't hold the same gravitas that he did just naturally as a human being. Of course. Did and, uh, but anyway, I did turn it down. So did Tom Berenger. Hmm. But we ended up both doing it, and I think uh, we were both uh, persuaded by uh, Richard Lester uh, when he was brought on to direct the film. I mean, who could say no to Richard Lester who had worked with the Beatles? Like, you know? Yeah, Hot Day's Night, and he did The Three Musketeers as well. Oh, he was just so much fun to work with. And, and, you know, he had, he had convinced us. And I, I think it showed on, on film that uh, he was making a Victorian Western. And I think it had that sensibility. Yeah. I mean, 1978, you appear as Jack Barlow in the 19, 1978 film, um, about three surfer dudes in the 60s and 70s called Big Wednesday. That's uh, correct. That was, I, I remember that movie watching it as a kid. My goodness, I really do. Uh, Matt, Jack, and Leroy. Me and my brother used to walk around the house after we saw it. That's what we used to say, Matt, Jack, and Leroy. Uh, talk, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Talk about that film if you can for a minute. Well, uh, for me personally, it was a... Uh, it was a real watermark, uh, no pun intended. I mean, <laughs> hey, <right. laughs> but, uh, you know, I had grown up surfing and spent a lot of my youth from the time I was 11 to my early twenties 
you know, at, at the beach, uh, both before school, after school and all weekends and in and around school and work, I was always at the beach. So when I finally got to do that, uh, it is in fact why I went to Orange Coast College so I could be, you know, surf at Huntington Beach and, uh, and, and the jetties. Uh, when I got that, it was, it was, uh, I, I felt very vindicated because I was always, I was able to tell my dad who used to tell me, you can't eat your surfboard. <laughs> and I, 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 I was able to say, yes, I can. I am eating my surfboard. It's providing me with a good living. Right, right. Uh. And I had a great time doing that film and, and became fast friends with both Jan Michael Vincent and Gary Busey, uh, who I'm still very friendly with to, uh, to this day. I, I saw Gary just a couple of weeks ago oh. and uh, we were had there was a memorial for. Uh, yeah, right. For uh, Jan Michael. For Jan Michael yeah, Vincent, who had too passed. Bad. It's too bad. He, um, he, I don't know, he, he had a rough, he had a pretty hot at the end, and it's too bad. Yeah, I don't know. He may, he was a just a lovely, wonderful, sweet guy who just made some bad choices in his life, you yeah. know? And Jan Michael Vincent, for my audience that don't know him, he was an airwolf. And, folks, he was huge for his yeah. time. He was yeah. huge back in the day. He was very big, and um, he went south, and it was too bad because he was a very talented guy, and... Um, um, th this film being Wednesday, Bill, it, it wasn't really a, a hit for Warner Brothers at the time. Not at the time, not at the time. But uh, over the fall ensuing twenty years or so after that, it became a a cult favorite and has uh, uh, has made its money back many, many, many times. Mm. And it really on the DVDs, it really was a big DV, sales of DVDs made it pretty much make his money back, like you say. And um, ironically, this is the final theatrical film for your mom, Barbara Hale. Is that right? Yeah, because she was in it as well. Uh huh. Mm. Yeah. Uh, did she ever give you any tips? You know, in terms of you know styles, maybe. Uh, yeah, my yeah, my mom and dad gave me a tip: stay in school. <laughs> stay in school. <laughs> did they tell you? Did, you mean they didn't, they didn't tell you the joke about being an actor? They didn't tell you that one. Well, do you know what's what, that joke? Do, do you know the difference between a large a large cheese pizza and being an actor is? What a large cheese pizza can feed a family of four. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, real quick, that that film also started. Great character actor died too soon. Joe Spinell. You remember him? Yeah. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, he played uh, Shopping Cart. Correct, correct. Joe Spinell. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he, he was, was great. You know, he was, you know, he was famous for all those John Ford movies. And obviously everybody knows him from the Rocky movies. He was the bookie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he was great friends with John Milius, who, who was really uh, instrumental. I mean, he and, uh, uh, and uh, Denny Auberg, they wrote the film, but they were both surfers that would hung, hang out and tell wonderful stories at Malibu. Wow. Uh, those were in the days when uh, Lance Carson and Mickey Dora and all the great wow. famous guys were hanging out at Malibu. The great surfers. That's where that story came out of. And, and John, uh, John was such a raconteur and told wonderful stories. And he, he and he, the, the two of them were good friends. Wow. Cause John just idolized John Ford. Right, right. And Hawks, and I mean all those great filmmakers. Correct. From the 30s and 40s. How much surfing did you do in that film? I did a lot of surfing. Wow, they, they, did they have like quite a, a bit? Wow, did they have any stuntmen per se? Oh, sure, sure. Peter Town and uh, who, who was uh, this Australian fellow at the time. We could have passed as twin brothers, and he was number one in the world oh, at wow. the time mm. with the newly formed uh, Professional Surfing Association. And we got to be very good friends. I saw PT two weeks ago, mm. and uh, we couldn't pass for uh, twin brothers now. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, right. uh, but that's what age does to you. But, yeah. but still a wonderful guy. Yeah, we did a lot of surfing. We surfed all over California and uh, Point Conception, and we we surfed in uh, – before we started shooting, we were down in El Salvador, San Salvador. Wow, um, I know that. During the junta that was taking place. It was it was kind of a scary time. These but uh, we were down there surfing, and, uh, and then we surfed in Hawaii uh, in, in the fall during the, the big swells over there, and that was, wow. that was tremendous. These and what's the other story? Gary Busey was there, and he left right from there. Uh, to go do Buddy Holly. Oh, wow. Yeah, and the rest is history, right? 
Yeah, wow. there you go. Fantastic, fantastic. Folks, joining me on the phone is William Cat. Famous, everybody remembers him from The Greatest American Hero and uh, Fantastic Show ran from 80, 81 to 83, if I'm not mistaken. Um, fantastic show, which we're going to get into. But you did a movie called House. Uh, you did a, sh- I did a film called House. Talk a little bit about that, because I know that was a great film for you. Uh, House. Uh, that was a great film. We did that in 1986. Yeah, I had done a uh, house was a was a, it just had that same sense of humor to me, that kind of quirky, offbeat sense of humor that uh, that was so associated with Greatest American Hero. Mm. Yeah, it was, it was about a guy. It, you know, it's the same thing that I always love playing, which is the guy in the middle, uh, the guy that's playing it for real. And he's caught in an absurd situation. That's what I love to play then what I still love to play now. And those two, those two uh, 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 properties both had that same kind of tone to it, you know? So talk about the scene where George went in the raccoons in the closet. Isn't that freaking awesome? That's, <laughs> you know, all these years later, I told George not too, too long ago, we were at a, at a Comic-Con together. And I said, you know, George, of all the scenes I've done, I've been lucky enough to work with great actors. I said, that stands out as one of my very favorite scenes oh, wow. Be- and 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 because it is so freaking funny and the and the great thing about it it's all i'm playing off of his george wentz looks he didn't have a lot to say he but his looks were just priceless right 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 his reactions are fantastic oh god it was funny mm. good old days good old days huh uh yeah uh, Billy, so you're doing you're doing a play off Broadway, and in comes Stephen J. Cannell. Yep. Talk about that when it related to uh, Greatest American Hero. Um, well, the the that story goes. My agent Michael Black at the time was at ICM. Um, I had come off three years of no work. Uh, Oof. Well, now wait a second. I was pay or play <laughs> on several films. Uh, oh, I was going to do November Gale. Uh, can't remember the actors, great actors uh, up in Toronto that got, had the kibosh put on it. I was going to work, uh, do a, uh, a film, um, never cry wolf by Farley Moat that, uh, Charles Martin ended up doing the actor. Hmm. Um, I was pay or play on both of those films, nope. so I got paid, uh, oh, so, although I didn't do them. Right, I was going to say. And then I was, uh, I was going to do a, a film with uh, Walter Matthau called uh, First Monday in October, and I was, I was fired three days after I was hired for whatever reason. They said I couldn't do comedy, and I said, uh, okay. Oh, wow. And, uh, Interesting. So, so, so <laughs> I said, well, I'm going back to do what I know, and uh, it's funny because I got the show greatest american hero came after that and it's and it was it was, it was a, a pretty successful comedy yeah pretty well. um and uh but anyway I, I went back to do theater because i had always been had a lot of success in theater i was working back east uh the last season of the phoenix rep in new york off broadway working with the wonderful diana Weist playing my yes. sister and uh, her and I and the rest of the cast, I believe they were all from the Guthrie Theater. They had been brought from the Guthrie to New York. We joined them there. And we had a, a very successful, great run. And uh, the last week or so of that run, I got a, my agent, Michael Black, as I said, sent me a script, said, there's interest in you for this. And uh, I read it, and it was laugh out loud funny, but I said, I'm... I'm pretty content to be here in New York, and I think I'll stay here. Hmm. And he said, well, can Steve Cannell come out and just talk to you? And I said, sure. And I really wasn't aware who Steve Cannell was. Uh, I, I wasn't aware of the, 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 how iconic he was yes, in, yes. in television. He's like an Aaron Spelling type. Oh, my God. I think other than Aaron Spelling, he's the most successful yeah. independent producer in the history of television. Hmm. Um, but he came out, and he just wooed me. You know, he... He was so gracious and kind and funny and such a wonderful storyteller and uh, convinced me that we were just going to have a wonderful, fun time on the shoot. So I said, OK. And uh, Sunday afternoon after the matinee, I, it was our last show. I got on a plane, came to New York. My hair was brown at the time because they had – I'm naturally blonde, but they dyed it brown because I was playing a uh, French-Canadian. And uh, we started work that next Monday. Wow. Yeah, uh, 
um, you know, I, I had Burt Ward on, and we talked about Burt Ward in the beginning, and he did an audition for Batman, and him and Adam West come out on the stage, whatever they were doing, and he's got the tights on, and he's like, yep. you got to be kidding me. What is this? He had, no, <laughs> he had no idea. I mean, know the comic books and stuff, but he's like, all right, then he took it off, and he's like, well, you know, you got the pot, and you're going to have to wear that for, you know, how many seasons we run. He was like, well, I can't do this. But, I mean, when you read the pot about the, the, the suit and the tights and everything, we... I mean, were you a little leery at the time? Oh, my God. Well, Steve would never talk about the the suit. He just said it's hideous. <laughs> Was that what he told He did tell you about Oh, the- yeah. He said, oh, it's hideous. He said, he's, don't worry. He, he didn't show me the suit until uh, just before we were we were shooting. Oh, and wow. And then uh, that funny, that there's a funny scene uh, where Ralph puts on the suit for the first time and his son is playing uh, cartoons in the other. He's playing like a Superman cartoon or something on TV. And... Uh, and I look at myself in this in the suit in the in the red jammies. I look in the mirror and I go, "Hi, sailor." <laughs> <laughs> I, I I affect this lisp and and Steve was so brilliant. He kept it in the in the uh, in the episode. Wow, wow! Well, you it, can't do you can't do that today. No, you can't do that today. I mean, you yeah. talk, talking about speaking about that, did you have any any say with the scripts? Any ad lib possibly, or do you have to stick? To oh the my God, Bob Bob Culp and I ad libbed all oh, the freaking wow. time. Oh my God, all the time. Awesome! Wow. Yeah, it was great. So did Connie. Right, right. I mean, the, when the three of us got together, it was kind of lightning in a bottle, and it was just, you couldn't, oh. it was a, kind of this unstoppable uh, synergy that would take place, wow. and it was just Fantastic. so much fun. And 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 God bless Steve Cannell and the producers, they they uh, had the good good sense to leave a lot of the stuff in the in the wow. in the final cut you know oh, interesting uh, interesting en- enough bill uh, connie Selica, connie selica was was only in the pilot episode in the beginning that's all she was hired to do right. was the pilot but uh steve steve uh told me that uh you know several times that she was so good and the producers uh both at his company and the network they loved her so much that they offered her a series contract at the end of that first week. Oh wow! Imagine yeah. that. Imagine that. How yeah. stuff. It's, see, this is what I love about my my show. And we, you know, when I get guys like you on with such vast resumes, and they've been in so many shows and movies and stuff. Like a lot of the behind the scenes. When you go to a theater or you watch on television, that's the finished product. You know what yeah. I what I try to do is get the behind the scenes stuff that nobody knew about, and like Connie well, Salica. Yeah, yeah, and you know when I'm doing cons out there, when I do, I do like three, four, five a year for the last several years. And, and, and that's what we talk about when fans come to see me. We talk about behind the scenes stuff that was going on. Wow. And we, we share stories of where we were in our lives, both them as kids when Correct. they were watching and, and then me on the set. You know, that's what people are interested in. Right, right, exactly. I mean, exactly. It was such a great show. I mean, for, for what it was at the time in the you know, early 80s, um, you know, it meant so much to so everything means so much different to so many people as you know mm-hmm. what I mean um, mm-hmm. early on in the show Rob, speaking of Robert Culp you guys didn't really blend that too well did you well we didn't we didn't right at the beginning mm. no we didn't we didn't uh, but I think that that really worked worked for the benefit of the show because the the anim, the animus that you that we shared uh, as characters on the show that that kind of uh that spilled from real life into the show, mm. and uh, and it worked. But I have to tell you, by the end of by the end of the of the pilot, we we were we were ve- on very good friendly terms, mm. uh, if not personal, but certainly professional. Mm. Yeah, I, mean, I think he, he learned to respect me, and I, I of course right, respect. Yeah, you know, he was obviously a veteran actor at the time. Obviously, yes, he I, was. I spy and stuff like this. He's yeah. a young, good-looking guy coming on the set. And, you know, who, who knows? Yeah. You, you know, um, it's, it's such a great show. Like I said, it meant so many different things to so many people. That's you guys got. Did you guys get on Friday nights? You went up against Dallas. Well, uh, ultimately, yeah, right. uh, the, the, the last season they put us against Dallas, and that's yeah, that's everybody suicide. knew at the time. That's yeah, that's suicide. where they put shows yeah, to die. That's yeah, where they right. put shows at the to time. Die. I mean, yeah. yeah. I got, um, for those people out there who don't know the show, can you? I think you could see it on Amazon. The forty-four episodes. Um, great premise. Different, you know. Great premise with you know you you, you lose the destruction instruction manual and uh, mm-hmm. you know you're smashing into walls. How about the stunt work? Did you do any of the stunts? No, not really. I mean, it was <laughs> the old. You know what we did? You know that was my uh, still a very, very dear friend of mine, Dennis Madelon. Dennis Danger Madelon. Uh, he was my stuntman, and uh, 
and uh, no, he 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 never let anybody get hurt on that set. Mm. And he did uh, a great deal. Of, and we did the old cowboy cowboy switch. Have you heard that? Uh, cowboy switch. It's a cowboy switch where you see you'd see the stuntman doing something. In this case, he'd fly into into a wall or into a, into a tree and fall down, or and and then I would jump up. So I would be where the stuntman was going to land. And then oh. I jump, and then I would jump up as if it was me. Oh, interesting! And uh, because it was so quick, you you could never tell the difference who it was. Did you guys ever? I mean, did you personally ever think that it, nowadays it's a real cult hit, and you know, obviously the conventions, it's a huge deal. I mean, did you? And you I only did forty four episodes, like I said. In your yeah. wildest dreams, yeah. I mean, did you ever think it would just catch on later on, like it did? No, it's amazing. I I I, I it, it's pretty amazing. I think. Uh, <laughs> I think Seth Mc, McFarlane paid homage to it in one of the Family Guy episodes when he talked about how a show, it, it remarkable that a show could have that kind of legs for only being on the air for such a short right. time. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And, and Peter's talking about it. Um, <laughs> you know, but I think the song really helped. The song oh, became. Oh, my goodness. I think the song was more famous than the series itself. Who sang the song? Ah, uh, uh, I can I can look it up. Gosh, you have to look at that. Yeah. Maybe you can find it while we're on the phone. Yeah, have yeah. To Google yeah. that. Yeah, I have to Google um, that. But uh, shame, shame on me. I should know that after yeah. all these years. I'll find it. I'll get it for you. Um, I want to say uh, nowadays. I mean, I'm I'm sure you probably know more than I do about it. But like I said, it ran from you said late '79 to '83. Um, yeah. First, first of all, why did it get canceled? I mean, I want I don't obviously ratings, but was there a reason why they pulled it out so quick? I, you know, I I don't know. Cannell's not here to talk about it. Bob's not here to talk about it. Um, I, I I think it had more to do with the fact that they wanted us to uh, chase monsters through the subways and the and the and the you know in back alleys and and I know that. Uh, Bob Culp and myself, and I think Stephen Cannell even, we wanted to use it more as a uh, as a, a social podium to uh, bring attention to, attention to some social issues, you know. Right. But you know, be be you know, treat it more farcically, you know. Yeah. Um, but still have something to say. Yeah, it's, a f it's just a fun show, like you say. It was a little campy, but it was fun at the time, yeah. you know. And we everybody had yeah. a great time watching it. So, so, so today they're talking about doing a reboot. Have you heard anything about that? They already shot it, brother. They, they shot, shot it? it. Oh my god! They goodness. shot it last year with uh, all women. All women, right? I was going to go down. Women showrunner, women producers, a women in the lo a woman in the lead, and uh, in fact, uh, we were talking about him earlier. George went. Uh, he was one of the series regulars, and um, for some reason, they didn't pick it up. Now, I never saw it. I don't really know much about it. Yeah, because it's been maybe, like, maybe one of your your listeners on your show will have a uh, six degrees of separation and know uh, know somebody who knows something. But I don't really know much except that it wasn't picked up. Oh wow! Yeah, I didn't know that. Breaking news! Wow! I mean, they didn't consult with you as far in terms of uh, technical. No, can you imagine that? Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I mean, everything's getting. Re I mean, what what are your thoughts? I mean, I know today t they say it's the golden age of television with the Games of Thrones and you know the Breaking Bad and all that stuff. I mean, what are your thoughts on today's television in terms of? I don't know. Well, I th I think some of the remakes they've done have been terrific. I thought the the film of Jump Street that they did was was terrific. I had a lot. It was. I had a lot of fun watching it. Uh, the new Magnum, I think, is pretty yeah, darn I like good. Yeah, I like the new Magnum. I, I, I can deal with yeah. it. I can deal with it. Yeah. Um, so there are shows that do very well. And uh, again, I think uh, isn't they they redid MacGyver, and that's still on the air, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. I mean, there's so still, there's uh, so there's still some successes. Yeah, there's still some good stuff out there, but it, they're difficult. Yeah. Obviously, you know, four or five stations back in the old days. Now there's three thousand, you know, and all that's there's Hulu's and Roku's and all that stuff, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. I have no idea what the hell they're talking. I don't even know how to use my remote to be honest with you. It's it's, yeah. pretty, it's pretty sad, but you know, yeah. when, in those days it was like, like I said, three or four channels. Um, Bill, you, you did the Perry Mason reboot. Um, somebody you didn't want to do it, so somebody had to call you to to convince you. Oh, Raymond. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Raymond called me and I was on, uh, on tour with uh, Pirates of Penzance with the late, great George Rose. I was playing the Pirate King and we were in, uh, at that time we were in St. Louis and, uh, you know, when, when Raymond Burr calls you on the phone and 
speaks in that basso profundo voice, mm. uh, you just can't you can't say no. <laughs> so I, I did, and I, I was able to get out of my contract. My agent manipulated something. Oh wow! And uh, and I flew from St. Louis to Toronto. And we did the first episode. You know, it was just terrific. I, I had a good plot. Good plot. You seem like a larger than life guy, kind of guy. I mean, what kind of guy was he? Personable? You know, was he personable? Was he? You know. Because he's got such a huge resume, obviously. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't. You know, he doesn't need any help. Uh, his <laughs> his career speaks for itself. He was just he was a lovely man, very philanthropically minded. He did a lot of things for a, a lot of people, and uh, he never wanted to take credit for it. You know, I think he put like twenty. He owned an island in Fiji. Oh wow! And uh, he what? never wanted to. He put like twenty five young men through college. And I think the only stipulation was that they had to come home, you know? Oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah. Did not know that. Um, yeah. Did you work with Sammy Davis Jr.? I did. Wow. Gee whiz. Holy yes. mackerel. Uh, I know. <laughs> Him and, uh, let's see who... Oh, I was playing Ernest Borgnine's son. Wow. You worked with him, in too? That, it was a movie of the week. I think it was called Trackers, maybe. Yes, I think or it was maybe Trackers. maybe it was... Trackers or the daughters of Joshua McCabe. I can't remember one of those. And uh, yes, Sammy was great. I had for many years. He gave every all the the, the actors uh, these beautiful leather uh, leather bound uh, script holders that, with your embossed name on it. It was just lovely. I kept it for many many years. Mm. Oh wow! Uh, did he teach you how to dance, tap dance? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. When I met him, he was riding a horse. <laughs> wow, good. The, and, the man and could do it. Was, and, and very good, by the way. The man could do it all. The man could do he it could. all. He uh, could. Is there anybody out there that you would love to work with that ha you haven't? Any actors out there? Well, of oh, course. Directors, there's always... oh, directors. Oh, there's, there's, just, there's too many to mention. Mm. I mean, they're all just marvelous, marvelous, marvelous actors. Um, so what's coming up for, for William Cat? I mean, are you got some conventions uh, coming up down later on in the year? Yeah, I got some conventions. I'm going to do a couple films. Uh, I'm going to do a film with my friend, Brian Skiba, uh, something with, uh, Ryan Phillippe where we start June 8th and, um, I just have a small role in that. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I like to work with my friends and then I'm doing another project after that, a little bit bigger role. And I, I believe I'm working well. I can't mention their names because they haven't been right. completely set yet. But uh, uh, some some fairly well known actors in a in an action film that should be pretty good. Mm. I mean, the conventions you go to, Bill. I mean, I mean, you know, what the reactions? I mean, talk about how that makes you feel when you see these people coming up to you talking about, you know, I was ten and I was twelve. I mean, it must be some a great feeling. Well, it's always great to know that you had an impact on someone's lives. And more often than not, it was a very positive impact, you know, mm. as, as, as it's famously known, I wasn't a fan of the show at the time when I was doing it. Um, I didn't realize what an impact it was making on the audience and, and, and the fan base out there. Mm. Um, and uh, it wasn't until years later that I really understood the gravity of that, 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 that had left a watermark on all these people. And, uh, and I felt so grateful and so humbled by the whole experience. Mm. Yeah. Um, you've had an amazing television career. Like I said, you did the rookies. You did so many, you, you did so much stuff back then. And, um, you know, you're one of the greats in my book. And, um, you know, I, like I said, I mean, it's so it's such a talented guy is, is, is theater. You would say theater be your biggest love. Oh my God. Yes. Mm. With the hand, hands down. There's no question. Mm. Um, do you still get get a chance to get on stage every now and then? Uh, no, uh, you know, for so many years, you know, it, it was the demise of my first marriage because I was away so much. And, uh, my second marriage, uh, it, it was starting to have an impact, uh, on my marriage. And I, and I, I really wanted to keep this one. So, um, I worked with, you know, one of my great experiences, I got to work with Randy Newman in Seattle at ACT. Oh, wow. Uh, that was just marvelous in the education of Randy Newman. It was a play that came out of South Coast Repertory, and a year later they were up at uh, ACT. And uh, funny enough, I auditioned for it in New York, but we, we were doing it at ACT, and it was kind of a master's class working with Randy. Um, just, just a brilliant musician and a wonderful storyteller. 
and it was seven of us on stage. We could all read music, and uh, we never left the stage for for two hours. And we told his story, Randy mm. Newman's story. Mm. Anyway, I was away for six months doing that. When I got back, it was so hard on my marriage. I promised my wife I wouldn't do it again. So, as a result, I've done one play at the Pasadena Playhouse since then, but really not doing any theater or or making sure that I'm not away for for very long. Mm. I've directed a couple plays since then, but that's always great. You get to go direct. You're away for three or four weeks and opening night. You, uh, you get to say goodbye to the cast and come home. You know, mm. you also did an episode of Animaniacs. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Wow. How was that? With, uh, What's his name? I just had him on too. Uh, Rob Paulson. I had him on. Rob oh, Paulson. isn't he a crack hey, up? He's the best. He's oh, a, my God. He's the, he has the funniest stories. Yeah, Frank Welker, all those great guys. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's a yeah. great storyteller. I mean, how was that for doing voiceover? Oh, yeah? I mean, how, how was that for you doing a voiceover for a cartoon? Oh, character? it was fun. You know, that's kind of a boys it, a boys and girls club, you know. <laughs> when you get into that clique, it's it's really its own tribe. And, uh, you know, I, I fit for a while. I worked and over at Warner Brothers, and it was a lot of fun. It was kind of short-lived. It only lasted two or three years, but I really had a good time doing it. Mm, yeah, I can imagine. Something different, you know, doing a, doing a voiceover. You know, it must be must have been a great time for you. And, uh, Bill, this is wild. Wow, time flies. You, you've, you're a great – thank you so much for coming on the show, Bill. I mean, I'm a big fan, and um, maybe we'll see you at a Comic-Con someday. And if, you, if you come to Boston someday, hit me up, and uh, I'd love to come down there and chat with you for a while. Oh, thanks. Thanks, my brother. I appreciate it. It was great to, to visit. My love to all the fans out there and your listeners, okay? Thank you so much, folks. The great William Cat from The Greatest American Hero. And Bill, we will talk to you down the, soon, uh, down the road. Thank you so much for doing this. I appreciate it. Okay. We'll talk Bye-bye. to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.